What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Y'all hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. I'm here to tell y'all something that y'all already know. Well, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but you probably can tell by your social media interactions on Twitter or whatever from grown-ass men like me. Wrestling is back entertaining once again. Seriously. And it's really, man, Dwayne, The Rock, Johnson, Triple H, all of them together have made some amazing storylines. And these men are getting in front of the camera and creating cinema for me to believe in wrestling again. Y'all, I was I got into wrestling in the late 90s. I'm talking about I was a little bitty kid. I was like, like 99, 90, like yeah, 99, 98-ish, 99. I got into wrestling. And I was hooked all the way into probably about 2003, 2004. Right after the rock and them left, after the rock stone cold left, I left during a ruthless aggression era. I don't know what it was. I probably because my childhood favors were gone and it was hard for me to connect to the product like I used to because the guys that I was looking forward to seeing were gone. You know, it wasn't like I found out it was fake and I left because in my mind, I think I always kind of wondered about it because I heard people saying it was fake so much. But I was just enamored with the people that I grew up watching, right? All the different, even the mid-carters. I was excited to see them and Jeff Hardy and I mean, the Hardy Boys in general, uh, the Dudley Boys. I was excited to see um, uh, Rob Van Dam, Kurt Angle, um, China back in the day. I was excited to see all these different characters, all these different wrestlers. But I left a while ago. And I remember, um, like... Around 2009, 2010-ish, I was trying to watch a little bit, right? And I just couldn't do it. It was like the storylines didn't feel authentic. Something felt like it was missing. The heart and soul of wrestling, I don't know what it was. And maybe I'm tripping. I probably, it was, I'm probably tripping. I'm probably tripping because I know a lot of men who never wavered from wrestling at all, right? But man, listen, listen I've been watching The Rock. The promos he been cutting, bruh. I'm talking about nostalgia at its peak. Now, I will say this. It doesn't, it, it still to me falls a little bit short of what he used to do back in the day. But it's a it's a big improvement from the Dwayne Johnson that we were seeing in his recent uh, <clears throat> WWE returns, right? What do I mean by that? I see Dwayne Johnson is more what they call PC. He's more like cookie cutter and hi, I'm the good guy. I'm the good guy. Everybody, I'm here to cheer for all of you all. I'm glad to be here with you all. I'm glad to be in your presence. I'm so thankful to be here. I'm so thankful that you all still love me. And listen, man, The Rock was really an anti anti-hero when he was in wrestling. Like he was the dude that can come out and save a woman from a wrestler, but he can also give that same woman a rock bottom, right? He can come out and give uh, Stephanie McMahon a rock bottom through a uh, through a table, you know. Um, he could also come out and help one of his fellow wrestlers who was in need. He could do all type of outlandish stuff. He can come out and call the uh, the, the crowd trailer park trash, you know. He can call them out their names. He could taunt the crowd and still be able to to get the crowd on his side with slick catchphrases and his promo his promo skills exemplary. I didn't like the, the the promos that Dwayne Johnson was cutting for the WWE. I wasn't entertained by that. I wasn't glued to the TV. Now we see him turn heel. Like when The Rock is heel, that is when he is at his best to me. Like Hollywood Rock was amazing. I don't care. Like the corporate rock, Hollywood rock, nation of domination rock. That shit was like, that is gold. Because at that point, he's un unleashed, he has no reins, and he ain't anybody can get it, like Adrian Broner say. He the can man, anybody can get it. He talking about everybody, man. And his dedication to his heel character this time. He's dressing in the, the clothes, the Versace clothes. You know, it's not real Versace, but you know what I mean? Like, he dressing in the dress shirts and all this stuff, the, the, uh, the um, expensive garbs that he used to dress, dress in, you know, when he was first, when he was a heel, not a heel, yeah, when he was a heel and when he was a face, uh, a baby face in wrestling. You know, in the 90s, in the early 2000s, he's wearing that same type of attire. You know what I mean? And see, when The Rock was wearing, see, this is when I feel like, 
Well, in his first run, he still was authentic. He was talking trash still. But when he came back in that second return, when it's what, 20, 2011, around that time, 2012-ish, he was wearing all the Under Armour clothes. And when he's in that Under Armour, he's Dwayne Johnson. When he throw on them expensive-looking-ass shirts, that's The Rock. You hear him calling. He was in Utah calling the crowd inbreds, calling with your 60 wives and all that, talking crazy about them. He was just in Arizona calling them crackheads, calling them all type of meth mouths and all type of... That's the rock I like. Talk mess to the crowd. Talk crazy. Be flashy. Show the bravado. Um, show your the makeup of what made you the pinnacle of wrestling. Him and Stone Cold Steve Austin were at the top. And you see him in the interactions, not even just The Rock, how Roman Reigns is responding to The Rock in The Rock's dominant character. The way The Rock is dominating the ring when they're in the ring together, he making Roman Reigns look like a side character. And you see Roman Reigns' frustration with that, just the little nuances and stuff. Paul Heyman in the background when The Rock acknowledged Roman Reigns as his tribal chief and Paul Heyman <laughs> hugging the belt. Oh my God, I say, yo, the, the little nuances, man. You saw it being uh, planted because at first people were pissed that he was taking away uh, a shot at Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns. People was mad about that, right? And then now the angle switched up. I don't know if it was the plan all along for them to, for this to be the angle or if they saw the reaction to The Rock coming in and telling Cody, Cody Reigns, or Cody Reigns, Cody Rhodes to move aside for him to go at Roman Reigns. I don't know if they saw their reaction to that and they flipped the script. Whatever they did is genius. From The Rock slapping Cody Rhodes to him telling Triple H, you better fix it. You talking about my family, you better fix it. I'm like, yeah. The way that shit looked like it was real. It looked like The Rock was really, really pissed off about it, man. You know what I mean? So that is what made wrestling in my time when I was watching the Attitude Era. It made, that's what sold it. Grown ass men was tuning in to watch Monday Night Raw. Seriously, like that, that is really the storylines, the way the characters felt believable, the way, like, like they, it was no breaking the kayfabe, I mean, kayfabe is the wrestling storyline. I really thought Undertaker and Kane were brothers. I really thought if The Rock ever saw Triple H in the grocery store, he was going to start whooping Triple H ass. <laughs> I thought if Stone Cold Steve Austin Ran into The Rock somewhere in public. They was going to stare each other down for at least 10 minutes before one of them moved on to the, whatever they was going to go do. Right? And it was believable because these guys sold it. You know what I mean? Like Undertaker sold his character for years. Didn't do interviews like that. Stayed in all, all black attire to keep the mystique of his character. Now, I know that's overly, that's all being overly dedicated, right? But it was just everything felt so authentic. And now we have a, uh, The Rock, who's a board member now. And I think now he knows, hey, this product got to be good. I have to commit to this. You cannot be Dwayne Johnson. You can't bring that to wrestling. The fans are not going to eat that up, man. You need to be The Rock in every sense of the word. You hear me? He going to have to put a woman through a table some, at some point soon. <laughs> he going to have to do that. All right? He going to have to give... Somebody to rock by air, yeah, like a whole crowd of individuals to rock bottom, like Stone Cold Steve Austin. But remember when Stone Cold came in the ring, gave everybody the goddamn stunner, was whooping everybody's ass. I don't remember what event that was. Was that on Raw or SmackDown? I think it was Raw. Came in the ring, gave like 13 people the Stone Cold stunner. Like, the, the Rock gonna have to do something like that. Because, the, like, you now have wrestling fans back in the palm of your hands. People are making reaction content to wrestling videos, bro. Like, seriously, I've seen men talk about their wives sitting and watching wrestling with them when The Rock is on TV, watching the Roman Reigns, Rock, Cody Rhodes, and them. People talking about their wives are watching with them, man. So now you got to keep capitalizing on this. You got to keep selling it. Shit, when they go to Texas, The Rock got to be that brainstorm gold out. You hear me? Let some little nostalgia seep in a little bit in the storyline somewhere, some way, if, if you can, right? Um, But yeah, man, I like... The Rock never then got wrestling back cracking again, man. And, and you see the angle where he keep doing this instead of doing this, you know, with the bloodline salute at the end. And it's like, why The Rock throwing up an L? Is it set for the table and for them to turn for him to turn on the tribal chief for him to be head of the table? 
the dynamic, you see the friction building, even though they hugged each other and all of that after The Rock acknowledged Roman Reigns as his tribal chief. It's still going to be some tension because Roman going to be like, yo, The Rock still is dominating the screen. His presence is ever dominating. You know what I mean? So we're going to see about a tag match with Cody Rhodes now. We're going to see how it play out. But I'm going to say this. As a guy who was a fan of wrestling, who was a fan of wrestling as a kid, I'm back invested. I, matter of fact, I've been playing the, the last three wrestling games I've been playing, right? And, you know, I'm trying to get used to all these characters because characters, I've been gone from wrestling for years. For over a decade, I've been gone. Let's be for real. And now I'm like, damn, let me see what it's talking about, man. Let's see what wrestling on. I'm interested to see how they deliver this content to us, man. I really am, but it's, uh, I feel like, yo, The Rock and, 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 and Triple H now, whatever they cooking up in the background is working. It's working. And I think The Rock going to start letting even more loose, and I think he should. I think all the guys, man, they selling these storylines, man, and, and, and telling you, man, I'm, I'm invested. I don't know about y'all, but wrestling is back cool again, like The Rock said. It's cool to be talking about wrestling. You know, back in the day, I know some dudes that were watching wrestling that was on the quiet about it, hush, hush, or they were they watched it, but they were in the minority and people were looking at them like they were weird. Now, you see people who don't normally watch wrestling talking about it, sharing it, you know what I mean? Having conversations and discussions, doing reaction content on it, so that you know it's something different bubbling in the air this time around, man. And... I'm liking it. The Rock got to be The Rock, not Dwayne Johnson. I don't like Dwayne Johnson in, in wrestling. Be The Rock. Talk crazy. You know what I mean? And, and show that bravado that everybody loved and, 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 and bought into your character for. Machiavelli Mills TV. Y'all hit, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. I'm out. Peace.